But anyway, as always for the weekly RNG, we have a guest in the studio, and this week it is Janiqua. Hello, hey. Janiqua. Hey, how are you going? Hi, nice to be here. Excellent, excellent stuff. Now, Janiqua is an artist uh, that I've been playing, uh, or I've been bigging up for, for a good few weeks now, basically. Um, I first heard of Janiqua's uh, track, Making Love, mm -hmm. that's right, uh, yeah. some, I believe it was a good, good three months ago now. And originally I got the electrified dub mix. Ooh. Okay, which, shake it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I got the electrified dub mix, which um, initially, to my shame, I actually thought it was a US production with a US artist and everything. I actually thought it was American. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's I did. Cool. I actually thought it was American act and what have you. And in funny enough, it was someone on my Facebook, you know, the. Uh, you know, the uh, online community, keeping you informed, who informed me, actually, that not only were you Australian, that yeah. you were local mm. to this radio station. Very local. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it was, I thought it was my um, job to make sure that um, I promote uh, Janika's music as much as possible. Appreciate it. Thank and you. then also to uh, get, find the time to get you to the studio. Now, I know you're a busy girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, what I'd like to do, because I know that, um, as is always the case with Australia, you guys don't know your artists too well, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like you to tell the listeners exactly um, what is your vibe, mm -hmm. okay, and how, how you got introduced to, to, to your chosen genre, shall we say. Okay, um, I'm an R&B soul artist, and... Um yeah, I, I guess it stemmed from gospel. I grew up in the church and um, worship led in church for many years, and that was there was nothing like it. It was just amazing, and I guess in my music I put that into there. It's the ingredient in my music and, and of songs that are uplifting. You know, life that I've lived, challenging times, great times. Yeah, it's, it's just all in there. Um, so that's what I, what I do. I suppose let me get this straight. You actually grew up in the Shires, didn't you? You actually grew up in in Sydney. Is that correct? I was actually born in Wollongong. Okay. Down the coast a bit further, but um, okay. yeah, just been in the Shire for a long time, and you know, lived in Sydney and overseas and whatever. But I've, yeah, I'm based here now. And was gospel um, prevalent? Was it like a like a, a big scene at the time when you were growing up? Was it you know going to church and getting into the whole gospel thing? Was that was that the yeah? Thing at the time? Well, for my family, it was, and you know, I grew up with the worship teams and all that kind of thing, and and put myself in them because I just absolutely love singing. So. Mm. Um, I just thought it was just normal for me to do that and I just love praising God and, and everything that he's done in my life to this day, you know, and always will, so yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, um, when I announced that I was going to be um, showcasing a gospel house show, I know uh, mm -hmm. there were a few I raised eyebrows, you know, um, one of the things you don't, you don't do on radio is, it, unless you're a specialist talk show, you don't get political mm -hmm. and you don't you don't get religious or whatever you else mm -hmm. okay um, did you find that when you started getting involved in the gospel scene that, that you you found that you were sort of uh, pushed aside by mainstream or did you find that, that, that there wasn't a problem basically for me I've never really followed the rules that people have put on things like that like I mean I don't believe in religion okay. I, I I have a relationship with God and I just believe in what God represents in, in everyday life, in everything, in different forms. Um, it was just natural for me to just keep that um, alive in my music because I've got a lot to be thankful for. And I guess not getting caught up in any, I don't know, like cliques or anything like this. I just do what I do, you know. Sure. I've got two children, when they're asleep I'm there writing songs, you know, about what's on my heart. So, yeah. Excellent. So the, the Making Love track, I mean, how did that uh, how did it come about that it, it was remixed by the guys in the States? What, what was all that about? Well, it was actually um, two guys from Europe, uh, Cool Million. Yeah, okay. they, uh, they found some of my music on MySpace. And I'm so grateful for MySpace because that was a great connection. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so it was both from there and uh, they liked what I did and we found out, you know, I found out that they work with other artists as well. So they sent me two tracks, like uh, loops of music and stuff, and said, can you write something to this? And I did. As soon as I got it, I felt the connection straight away. 
and um, the song was birthed in like literally like 10 minutes. Wow. And I do write fast, I don't try to, I just, I've got so many songs in me that just want to come out, so yeah. I, that's just what I do. So yeah, did that, sent them back to them, and then they chose, it was only one of them they were going to choose for a compilation album, soul compilation album with um, different artists that are already established, like Eugene Wilde, you know, from the 80s and stuff like that. Oh, Melissa Morgan, yeah. um, you know, a few other ones as well. And it was birthed that way, and they loved it, and it, the song ended up on that compilation album. It's, it was the third song down, and ended up being the third uh, third single of the album. So, and that, so this album was called? Uh, Back For More. Back For More, okay. Yeah. And, and I know for a fact that the, the track itself got in at number one in the UK soul charts. Well, it was number. Th it started it debuted in the UK soul chart at number eleven, right. and then within that week went to number three. But it's been sitting at uh, number one for many months um, at TrackSource.com. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. In actual and fact, that was where I actually uh, became aware of the track. It was through, actually through, through Track Source. Oh, great. And as you know, Track Source is a, a, a sort of Anglo American outfit. So, mm. um, yeah, that was where I sort of made the American connection. And it wasn't, it was actually f um, when I was doing the track listing for one of my shows that a, one of my Facebook members actually said, Oh, actually, that Janika track, she's a local girl. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Out, it's my world. So, okay, so that goes to number one. So, what, so um, how has it progressed since? Well, because of the success of it and the reviews and everything, all the DJs were, were loving it and radio stations and stuff. So then uh, the guys did four different remixes, or five different remixes, and then four of them actually did their own. They did well on their own, but collectively, they were each one of them had a place in the top 20 of the top 100 uh, downloads for TrackSauce.com right. for the R&B hip hop category. Excellent. So, I mean, there's a few still in there, but the one that's remained is the Urbanized Mix. So yeah, at number one, yeah. Okay. So I check that regularly because you know if these things move around a bit, but that's actually stayed there. I, mean, I think it's gone from one to three and then back to one and it's sitting at one. So I'm really grateful. It's awesome. I suppose one of the, the amazing things with uh, sites like Track Source and, and um, Juno and what have you else, mm -hmm. and actually having so many different mixes is that you actually get to uh, get a profile with different types of DJs. I mean, for example, myself. As a vocalist, I've always wanted to know this. How do you... Because obviously you, you get your original mixes, mm -hmm. which the original mix was the R&B mix, is album. that right? Yeah, album mix, yeah. Uh, the album mix, which mm -hmm. is the, an R&B track, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So what was your impression when you heard the Electrified mixes? Oh, I loved it. I loved that... Um, well, they didn't change anything with my vocals. Right, it was okay, just the sure. feel behind it. And um, I guess that was like... I was blown away actually because here I am on those charts singing the same song the same way that I sing it um, and then the feels changed and so they each had their own, I don't yeah. know, yeah. success I guess. Um, but then when I sing it live as well I do like a jazzy kind of version so oh, cool. I don't know what's going to come out of me next so <laughs> I just <laughs> I go with the flow. Yeah. Next we've got in the studio right here on the weekly RNG for our Gospel House Expo, Jinequa, that's a, a local talent who's uh, doing some big things in the R&B scene at the moment. Um, so basically well, we've just heard um, uh, about what you've been doing basically uh, with this track Making Love and but I know that you've also got some other projects on the go. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about that? Yeah, uh, I have written my debut album last year. Um, there's been a bit of a delay on the, the uh, release of that but it's due to be out next year. Really excited for that, um, sharing all my songs with you. And in the meantime, just uh, I've put out a gospel uh, uh, project. Yeah. Okay. And that's been doing really well on mainstream radio over in the UK and you know different stations in the States as well, which is really good. Do you find it frustrating that your music doesn't get as much sort of um, coverage as you'd like to say with the mainstream stations over here? I haven't actually really tried. So okay. I... Like I said, you know, I sit at home when my kids are asleep writing songs and I just write and write and write because I just absolutely love it and I believe that they're going to go where they're going to go. I just release them to go wherever they're going to go and whatever comes from it is a blessing. I absolutely love what I do. I wake mm. up to what I do. Uh, I wake up to what I love doing every day. Um, anything above and beyond that is a blessing. So it, I think it'll, it'll have its time. I think sure. it's coming. So, you know, it's been in my vision since I was young. I've had this same vision 
over and over again and um, yeah, it's unfolding really beautifully. I mean, basically, what would you say to, um, you know, to up-and-coming artists who also want to delve into the R&B scene, I mean, over here in Australia, is, is it your thinking that the best thing to do would be to always look overseas? Because that seems to be, I mean, we had another artist, uh, a DJ producer, a few weeks back, um, Jose Silva, and, um, Shay Jose, actually, and, um, he was, he, I mean, he, this is a guy who's basically doing some big things overseas, but he was getting really frustrated that he wasn't getting as much coverage, and he's actually going to be moving to Europe as, okay. as a result next year. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that's actually, that m mentality is going to change? Um, I think there's a change coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think there's a change coming. Um, what it is, or, or, you know, how or when, I don't, I'm not sure of, but... Um, yeah, I think people like us can be instrumental in that change. Mm -hmm. um, you just, I, I just think just sticking to what you love, basically. I'm not doing it to get something out of, you know, the scene here in Australia. Um, I didn't even know my stuff was going to do well overseas. It just did. And mm. I, you know, and it's a blessing and more of that coming is just amazing. Um, I could possibly move to the States as well. But, you know, I think that whatever goes well over there does end up coming back to Australia as well. It's not sure. really something that I've gone like, oh my gosh, I've got to get somewhere in Australia or I've got to do this or that. So listen, we're going to be playing a couple more tracks from me. We've got um, Running yeah. and uh, Living Up. Tell us about those tracks. Running um, is about running to God. It's actually, it, was, it is a gospel track, but it's, it's been getting lots of play on mainstream radio. Um, I guess because it's left up, left up to perception, whoever's listening to it. You know, I don't really like to put limits on my songs and their meanings and stuff because I just want them to reach people where they're at, sure. whatever they get out of them. If it's made their day, if it's uplifting and, and made them feel good, then great, you know, changed sure. a life. You know, I'm all for that. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, that was just, uh, you know, talking to girls <coughs> or anyone really about relationships, you know, some people run to a guy to fill the void in, in their life and really... Not a bad thing. <laughs> well, you know, kind of going to God's a bit better than that because, you know, <laughs> he knows a bit more. But, um, yeah, so that song's about that. Um, you know, some of these songs are my personal experience, some are visions that I have or, you know, calling things that aren't as if they are already uh, things that I'd like to be doing. And I, I talk about all that kind of stuff in my songs. And Get Ready, the other song is featuring my daughter when she was four. Oh, wow. Yay. So, so she's you're, calling you're, people you're, to rise up and just yeah. So you get so she's sort of breaking into the scene. You're gonna yeah. You know. Oh, she was so adorable. I still remember her little head and the the uh, headphones were way big on her. And <laughs> it was just the most adorable thing. And she's got this the most innocent little voice. Yeah, she's speaking like a, a psalm. Oh, so or, oh, really? a, a scripture. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then more recently, I did with the same guys with Cool Million. Um, did a Christmas song. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, last Christmas oh. and. So I thought I'll introduce the kids into that again and, you know, they can sing on it this time. So they did, you know. Superb. Well, look, we're going to be hearing um, running right about now. So once again, if you've just uh, climbed on board, this is 2SSR 99.7 FM broadcasting out of Sydney Shire. We've got Janika Gentitis, our guest on the weekly RNG. That is probably the cutest <laughs> track I've heard for ages. Excellent. Oh, so that was, uh, once again, that was Janika and Janika's daughter. Shanice. Shanice. Love you, Bobby. Love you, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent stuff. Well, listen, it's been um, great having you on the show, Janika. I mean, uh, um, I know for a fact that um, you've also got another track that uh, is going to have a kind of a deep house mix mm. with it. What's, uh, tell us Ooh, about that. I haven't told anyone about that yet. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're the well, first. World exclusive, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a deep house soul track coming out. Okay. Um, yeah. well, hush, could, hush. I'll call you, I'll tell you the name. It's called Keep It Moving. Again, an uplifting message, but yeah. You, you're going to promise the weekly RNG crew, okay, that we will of have course. first dibs on yes. that, okay? Yes. All right. So you I heard, will. you heard it, people. Janika said she's <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna be making sure that we get the for the track first as world yes. exclusive. I Fantastic. Will. Well, once again, that this has been the, the weekly RNG with the weekly RNG guest. Janika Jen Titus, uh, giving her her insight into all things uh, R&B 
and spoilers. yeah exactly of course, spoilers <laughs> as well don't forget you can check out the uh, podcast of the interview and also there'll be a YouTube I know 